Hi, I'm Alex Forster, forest manager for Till Hill, and today I'm on the lookout for deer. If ever you've looked for deer in the forest, you probably know how elusive they are and how they can seemingly just melt away without a trace. But they do leave traces and they do leave signs. And it's these signs that we're going to look out for today to give us some idea of deer numbers in the area and any damage that they may or may not be doing. So it's very difficult to get accurate numbers of deer on your site. Uh, they're too hard to count. They're transient animals and a red deer, for example, might travel 20 miles in one night. So first, let's look for the damage that deer might do. Uh, there are five main types of damage and we're going to have a look for those now. Fraying is caused by male deer thrashing their antlers against trees, most commonly in the spring to get rid of the velvet or in late summer or autumn as they get ready for the rut. Here we have a hazel coppice stall that has been frayed by fallow bucks. Bowl scoring is caused usually by seeker stags, jabbing the point of their antlers into a tree and driving it upwards. So as you can see, the deer have taken the tops out of these trees. This is spindle and they pretty much killed them. Um, yeah, not looking good at all. Bark stripping looks a bit like bowl scoring, but it's done by male or female deer using their lower incisors to tear off strips of bark to eat. Grazing doesn't damage the trees directly, but does damage the forest ecosystem by denuding any ground flora, which impacts on the invertebrates and ground nesting birds. So we'll carry out habitat impact survey, and from that we can collect data and work out if deer numbers are at sustainable levels or if management interventions are required.